So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So what we have here is the most anticipated MPV of 2022. What I have here today is the 2023 Mitsubishi Expander GLS. This is the all new facelifted model of the Expander. Okay, let's get to the look straight away. Not a fan of this one. <laughs> Not a fan of the Expander badge here above. But it is really, really striking to look at. Of course, it still incorporates the dynamic shield design here on the grill. And the pre-facelift model was still really good because it was true to the concept car. But this is not bad at all. And I'm digging the looks of this new expander than before. And also this exact Mitsubishi expander is a very special one. This is a 2023 Mitsubishi expander super shogun with aero kit. This is the first time I've heard about this aero kit as you can see here. You have an aggressive bump here in front. It also houses your fog lamps here. Ground clearance, the stock form is 225 millimeters which is the same as the pre-face lift Mitsubishi expander cost. But this one now having the aero kit. Yeah, it decreased more or less like so this is now like what 170 millimeters the ground clearance is eaten up a lot but going over humps here as well around here BGC the mine museum you won't have issues with humps and bumps whatsoever also new to the expand you have LED lights here DRLs and then like before your main headlight is here now it's at a T-shape so it kind of mimics force hammer Again, I, I'm a low budget. I don't know how to use CGI. Anyway, and like the preface shift expander, there's a lot of chrome. I mean, just look at that. Chrome here, chrome there, even the badges, so on and so forth. But also what kept from the old expander, you have gloss black grills over here. So aside now from the extended front bumpers here, you also have side skirts here, rear bumper, new design as well. It's also gloss black and a spoiler I, I like the looks of the spoiler and the cost for all of this aero kit is an additional 110,000 pesos so the price of this expander now gls variant this is the top of the line by the way is 1,180,000 pesos so again 110,000 pesos more for the aero kit so it's closer now to 1,290,000 pesos same as the pre-faced expander cross which is still on sale today so we'll try to get our hands soon immediately with the new expander cross once it launches here in the philippines so side profile now being a super shogun variant there's also decals here also why is, is this expander so special i helped with the former marketing manager of mitsubishi bgc auto hub uh, sir inigo i helped i actually helped him decide the decal so this is kind of my spec but what is really special is that we go to the back this is more like it now i admit the preface lips front looks better than of this one but the rear of this facelift one looks better than the free facelift that's a tongue twister anyway also new to this expander you have led lights here they're all led now even the third brake light and as well as i mentioned earlier part of this aero kit the new bumper here with a diffuser and a spoiler here i dig the look and also the other special thing since this being the super shogun only available by the way from mitsubishi auto hub dealerships besides the side decals as you can see you also have decals in the air I designed this myself. I actually told Sir Inigo, we should put a black decal here to mimic its rival. I drew my inspiration from the Toyota Rush TRD slash now GRS. To be honest, this is already my spec of the Mitsubishi Expander. Otoha, please, can this be mine? <laughs> anyway, kidding aside. So the rear, as I said, looks nice. And also, what's been removed from the pre facelift variant, there's no more third Formula 1 style brake light here on the rear bumper. And as well, like before, there's still no automatic tailgate for this all new expander, but none of its competitors have this anyways, so it's fine with me. So space here in the back is more or less of the same, so these are only approximate figures since there are no official figures stated by Mitsubishi Philippines. So I'll just base it on the pre facelift model. So with all of the seats up, you have 150 liters, but you still can fit a lot. I mean, look, sit here in the back. That's how much space there is with all of the seats up. So only toys here in the back. You have two massive cubby spaces on each side. And then underneath, you have extra storage. If you want to hide caucus things here in the back, yeah, you can definitely do it here. And as well, the spare wheel is underneath here. And then folding down the seats is pretty easy. Just pull these guys and they fold flat. So with the third row down, you have approximately more or less 800 liters and then with all of the seats down you have a total of 1632 liters speaking of the inside of the all new expander there are more more changes to this new one so with that it i'll show you the interior oh it's heavy as well you get two tone wheels they are actually nice 
So this is the interior of the all-new Mitsubishi Expander, and there is a lot to talk about. I mean, a lot. So check the door tone. That sounds really good, way better than before. And starter up. Also, I found out the aircon is so cold. Like this expander gets cold really, really fast. Probably less than five minutes, the entire cabin is already freezing. So to start there, I like the new design here in the dashboard. And materials here and there massively improved. There's still plastic here on top of the dashboard and here on top of the door, but. Look at this, there is now silver trim and brown leather here on the door and as well two pieces of them here in the dashboard and in between those you have a silver trim just there. I mean, I feel like I'm in a premium Mitsubishi, that's the feeling I get now with this cabin. Around your window switches there is a fake carbon fiber trim. Yeah, yeah, it's plastic as you can hear. You have two bottle holders and cabin spaces on each side of the door, my water jug fits in all of them they're just two here in front and then two more here in the middle and then here on the left side of the dashboard you have again the leather soft pads your conditioning vent and your info for your multi information display and on the sides you have your analog tachometer analog speedometer and then below here on the left side you have your side mirror adjustments three blank buttons and one function button for your electronic stability control I found this button really weird like at a move it does not do anything it does not indicate the ESC is on or off here in the steering wheel yeah the leather here is kind of like polyurethane it's still nice to the touch there's also a nice mesh here in between the silver spokes you have your volume controls and then on the right side you have cruise control you have your 7 inch infotainment system it's wrapped in gloss black and also new to this Mitsubishi expander you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Android Auto works I just found the maps little bit laggy and delayed but it's much crisper than the previous one and as well reverse camera way better than before and then below that you have your two air conditioning vents and also the newest thing here in this expander is this air conditioning controls look at that they're kind of like mimicking Lamborghini or even Peugeot style switches and then physical bottles just below that and then further down below you have one USB port one 12 volt socket a extra cubby space here assume for your key a card holder and cubby space for your phone my phone doesn't go all the way down but it kind of fits I give that a pass your lever surrounding them a lot of silver trim and there's a lot of gloss black here and then like before as well there's an overdrive function here beside the gear lever one thing I find a little bit worrisome. Maybe it's just isolated with this unit. I'll just tell Mitsubishi BGC. But if this goes to all the expander units, just be, watch out for this. Of course, for automatics, you have to push this button to move between the gears, right? I found out you don't have to push the button if you're switching between neutral and drive. I mean, why? Anyway, I'll report this back to Mitsubishi BGC. In between the dashboard, there are two copy spaces. Assume for your money and coins. Center console box, it's wrapped in leather, the brown leather again. Open it up. There's no toys in here in the center console box, but you can fit a lot of stuff in there. And then there's also two more copy spaces here. On the passenger side, it fits my phone. And then glove box, huge, really huge. Also new to this expander I also mentioned this in my first impressions review the seats here are only fabric but very comfortable to sit in. and then there's also nice diamond patterns here on the seat and then not much bolstering but it's not meant to be a sports car <laughs> more on that later a light here and then visor no mirror here just a ticket clip holder just flimsy don't extend it's fine that's really soft oh I like, I like that that's really soft then on the passenger side, oh, there's your mirror with the, no, oh, just a mirror, no light, but at least there is. So, that's about it here in front of the all-new Mitsubishi Expander. I'll show you. So, this is the second row of the all-new Mitsubishi Expander. <laughs> that sounds way better than before, but the front doors sound still better than the rear. Anyways. So, like before, the space here in the back is still probably one of the best in its class. Apart from the Velos, this one comes at close second place though. So, feet room and knee room is excellent. That is massive. This is the most spacious in its class in terms of the headroom. So, like in front, plastic here and there in the door. But, usually I go to the second row of any 
common car usually this is all plastic now not this expander it still continues the silver trim here with the brown leather with the stitching you have one window switch here now but it still has the fake carbon fiber trim here and what's nice now with this new expander you have three cup holders on each side of the door fit everything as Kaku would say a friend you have a central armrest but unlike the pre-facelift model and the expander cross, you have now cup holders. Perfect fit again for my water jug. Also new to this expander as well, you have one USB-C port and one USB port in the middle. Behind the front passenger seat, you have one map pocket here. And then behind me, the driver's seat, you have a total of three map pockets. And if I sit here in the middle, headroom not eaten that that much, it's still the same. Transmission tunnel is nearly non-existent. You can put your feet wherever you want. I'd still be happy to sit here in the middle. I mean, not as comfy to unlike the left and right side of the seats, but still comfortable. And what's nice now with this expander, you have air conditioning vents on the ceiling. And what's even crazier, look at this aircon knob. It is metal. I've not seen that in any other MPV in its segment. And as well, like in front, well actually technically all of the seats here, they still have the diamond pattern here in the second row. And like the pre-facelift model, let's go to the third row now since we're here. How do you do this? As well, you have two isofix anchor points on each side. These seats still tumble. So going to the third row will be very easy. I mean, I'm ready here. And then space here in the third row. It's really good for my stature. I am 5'4. I'm a very skinny person. Knee room, feet room is excellent. And then go back here. Headroom just enough for me. So small adults and children will definitely be fine here in the third row. And then toys here. Here on the left side, you have a seat belt holder, a cubby space here above, one cup holder here, and then another cubby space. Same layout on the right side, but on the right side only, on this top part, you have a 12 volt socket. And then you have a light above here and a third seat belt for the middle seat for the second row. And then sitting here in the back, you can definitely fit three or four people in here in the expander, like before as well. So that's about it here in the interior of the new expander. I'll show you the engine. So this is the engine of the all-new Mitsubishi Expander. It's exactly the same like the pre-facelift model. It's a one and a half liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine that produces 103 horsepower and 141 newton meters of torque. And it is mated still to a four-speed automatic transmission. This caught many by surprise. So we are expected in our market to have the CVT transmission as well. However, everyone got shocked when everyone said this is still has the same four-speed automatic transmission compared to the previous gen. But all I gotta say is since I drove this already the whole day before I did my shoot here, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's still good. I mean, like I said in every other review, I would take an automatic transmission rather than a CVT all day. Make no mistake, there are still good CVT transmission cars out there. So, it's enough of me talking. Let's go for a drive. So, driving this all-new Mitsubishi Expander, like before, this is also why I like the expanders. Their maneuverability, despite being a long MPV, it is so easy to drive. And as well, new to this expanded new suspension setup. I think similar to the Evo 10, if not mistaken only. What I like with the suspension, I'm here at this bumpy part. Check this out. This is like a really bumpy part of the parking lot. Look how comfortable that is. Yes, it's bouncy here and there, but it soaks them up pretty well. And despite the aero kit, you won't get worried at all with ground clearance. Look at that, here the pothole. <laughs> so comfortable. And also why this is as well the top pick for most buyers for first time families or for families in general because of its comfort. Compared with the Velos, there's actually just one in front of me right now. This is way comfortable than that, hands down. It is so good. Visibility, also the dashboard set really low. Even you have a long A-pillar here 
it's not an issue. The D pillar, yeah, it may get in the way, but there's the use of side mirrors. And here, I wanted to test this part in the car park. A very deep pothole. Watch this. Wow, <laughs> that soaks them up pretty well. So here now in the open road, and despite being a four-speed automatic. <laughs> this is what I like with this expander, weirdly. It is still so peppy amongst its competitors. Of, let's not include the Gili Okovango for obvious reasons, but for its price point against Toyota Velos, Suzuki XL7, there's a lot more. I'll just put them all on screen. Yeah, this is the most comfortable and surprisingly the most peppy one as well. I mean, it just takes all the boxes for me. And like Servin said, this is built by car enthusiasts, like with every other Mitsubishi product. The staying feel of this is, let's say, a bit too light for my liking only, just being honest. But to the point, it's not dead though. It has still way better feedback than a, for example, the likes of a Kia Stonic. Yeah, the engine is quite noisy. Yeah, I understand as well. This may be only a four-speed automatic. Kind of acts like a CVT at times only. I'm really surprised with this performance. I mean, look. Handling, body lean, not that much. Good feedback with the steering wheel despite being light. And <laughs> It's so peppy. Surprisingly, so peppy. I love this thing. And then the brakes. Okay, just a little bit of a travel, but the brake feel in general is really, really good. And as well, I just literally watched Kako's review last night of the Mitsubishi Expander. I kind of get what he said. If you're diving at higher speeds, it will keep you alert. Since I was able to dive this at faster paces earlier this morning, I did notice a lot of play with the steering wheel. And as well, call me crazy if you want. I don't know why. This steering wheel for me in my sitting position feels a little bit offset. It's kind of like that i don't know why i'm feeling this sensation with this car maybe it's just again isolated with this unit but it's something to take note of the u-turn test of course being an expander like the cross u-turn is very very easy so maneuverability in the city you won't have an issue whatsoever and this is the big surprise of course the expander is one of the most fuel efficient in its class I kind of believe that now. So, I'd like to apologize as well in my Expander Cross review. I found out I wasn't able to reset the trip computer. So, I said, I think I ended up saying that I did 5.4 kilometers per liter in that car. That's a mistake. I would like to clarify that. Now though, I was light footed at first before I did my normal usual fast driving. to high speeds in no time i'm really impressed with this performance back to the fuel economy with my light pace this is the most impressive one i managed 10.3 liters per 100 kilometers that is 9.7 kilometers per liter that's crazy fuel efficient that's just city driving by the way i'm very close to the claimed of what kako did in their review of 10 kilometers per liter and then with my faster diving i was able to reach 11 <laughs> liters per 100 kilometers that's still fuel efficient that's around more or less nine kilometers per liter very very good with this expander and compared to before we did old gls sport still prefer the pre-flace lift one but this one looks really really good especially this done with the aero kit and the decals because i kind of helped design that that's the first time i've actually been aligned with someone to design a car i know it's just decals but I'm very happy to be part of something. So, auto hub, please. Can I have this? <laughs> and from a standstill, unlike CVT, where it box down just a little bit. This one, look. Whee! <laughs> I really love to take this on a long journey. And I actually want to try it out with my friends soon. So, hopefully, that will come very soon. I'll make a video of that if ever. So, with this all new expander, there's a lot of changes. As I said, the suspension here and there. I did as well notice uh, using Android Auto, the ergonomics here with the air conditioning is the buttons here and there, cup holders. It's way better than before. It's. I, I think I should make my sister <laughs> try this again. Now, I know we love the Ford Ranger, but we tested out the 2019 expanded GLS Sport together. The auto hold function of this, 
is not as jerky or as intrusive as before. That's also what needs to be she focused on. So that's really, really nice to have now and very, very easy to use now. I'm really impressed with this ride of this new expander. Probably also one of the most comfortable MPVs I've driven. Yeah, again, it was screened if you're flooring it. And as well, there are no driving modes with this. And like before, there's that, as I said earlier, the overdrive function. It's, it tends to a little bit laggy, but it will definitely help if you're saving fuel. And then here, rough patches. This is also what's nice with this new expander. The NVH massively improved, as I, you heard earlier with the doors. Here, rocky and brick road. improved massively yes there's still a little bit of tire noise but it's not as loud as before so that concludes my review of this all new Mitsubishi Expander GLS with Aero Super Shogun with Aero Kit yeah I made it longer now since we did the decals here also I'd like to thank Sir Nino, Miss Diane and Mitsubishi Auto Hub and Auto Hub group themselves for allowing me to review this all new Expander and not gonna lie I want one. <laughs> Ranger this though. That'd be a future video. <laughs> so, hope you guys like and subscribe. And I will see you with more future car reviews. Bye-bye. I got. We heal allow me to review on Monday. Do you want to send it or change it? No. Tap on other messages to read them. God, this is nuts. Oh, bigi ko LNG daw sa'yo hashtag niya. Sbihin mo ako nagpakilala SYU. Adrian Sanfoto. Siya din nagsabi na helpful mga content creator ay ahaha kaya payag. <laughs> Do you wanna reply? Yes. Sorry, what's the message? Yes! Yes! I got, yes. Okay, it's sent.